Yeah, we conducted a, a phase two trial of, of pimavanserin, uh, which is a 5-HT2A uh, inverse agonist uh, for the treatment of psychosis. It's been licensed for treating psychosis in people with Parkinson's disease in the US, uh, based on a study we were previously involved with. And in the UK, we conducted a, a phase two uh, study looking at Alzheimer's psychosis with pimavanserin. Uh, so this was a uh, predominantly a six-week uh, randomized control trial comparing pimvanserin to placebo uh, in 179 people and then we had an extra six-week follow-on to look at safety type issues in the study. So the main study uh, we completed and was published in Lancet Neurology a couple of months ago uh, and showed significant benefit uh, in the improvement of psychosis at the primary endpoint at six weeks which has now led on to a, a phase three trial, which is commencing predominantly in the, in the United States. So we're very excited about that and excited to see what the results of that will be. Um, what we presented here in the poster was a, a, a further secondary analysis, uh, looking at the people within that study who had more severe psychosis. So these were people who scored more than 12 in total on the two main NPI psychosis items, looking at delusions and hallucinations. So this is pretty intense psychosis and about 40% of the study population had psychosis at, at that level. Whereas the interesting thing was those individuals did much better than the overall trial population. Um, There's so much more benefit and if you look at that in terms of a standardized effect size in the study overall the standardized effect size wasn't bad. It was a, a Cohen's D of 0.35 which compares very favorably with antipsychotics and other currently used medications which have effect sizes of about 0.2. So we we're very pleased with the initial study, but if you look in this subgroup with more severe psychosis, the effect size actually goes up to 0.7, which is potentially spectacularly good. Uh, clearly you need to be cautious. This is a secondary analysis. That wasn't the prim primary outcome. Um, but I think what's really encouraging about it is these are the patients we really feel we need to treat with pharmacological therapies. So those are the patients that we want to really improve and respond. So it was a really good signal that those were the patients who were doing really well with the pimavanserin treatment. Well, at the moment, there's a huge unmet need in, in treating psychosis in people with Alzheimer's disease. Um, it's a common symptom in people with Alzheimer's disease, depending on the stage of the illness, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of people will have these symptoms and over the course of the illness it's the majority and um, they're distressing for the person themselves for, for caregivers they accelerate placement in nursing homes and other types of institutionalization they're associated with more rapid decline so they're not just distressing they actually have a major impact on on disease outcome for, for individuals as well and at the moment we don't have any licensed pharmacological treatments and unlike other neuropsychiatric symptoms in people with Alzheimer's disease like agitation which respond well to non-pharmacological interventions, there's really not much evidence that psychosis does respond to those non-drug approaches. So currently what's happening is people are being prescribed atypical antipsychotics off-label but the effect sizes of these treatments is very marginal and they have a lot of harms. Um, they almost double mortality rate, they significantly increase stroke, falls, fractures, deep vein thrombosis. So, you know, we've been in a very difficult position where they've been the only available pharmacological treatments, but even then they're off label and they, they're associated with a lot of harms. So actually, if pimvanserin does turn out to be a more effective and safer alternative, that would be a, you know, a great step forward in, in treating these distressing symptoms.